guys, this is Gene, the Carolina Coin Hunter here uh, with another unpaid, unbiased review. Today I'm uh, doing my first impressions review of the White Spectre V3i. So far, I'm really liking the V3i. The ergonomics are great, uh, really feels good in the hand. It has a wonderful large color display, really easy to read. Pinpoint uh, trigger right here makes it really easy to hone in on your targets. One of the really nice features of the V3i is the Spectre Sound wireless headphones. That's something new from Whites that you haven't seen on other models previously. Really nice headphones. The sound is fantastic. No delay or lag of any kind when you're hearing your signals. These are heavily padded, comfortable on the head. Check them out. I love these big metal detecting headphones. Awesome. Yeah, these really feel sturdy. They take two uh, AA batteries here in the side. Real easy to sync to the machine. Once you turn it on, you just push a little button and you're off. The V3i, one thing I've noticed that's an improvement over the previous machines like the DFX is stability and resistance to electromagnetic interference. You know, with today's electronics, EMI is more of an issue than ever with all the cell phones and signals everywhere. The V3i gives you uh, several ways to combat this through your uh, <clears throat> frequency offset. Even the ground filters can have an effect on that. Or the actual frequencies you run themselves. So it's really easy to uh, you know, find and maintain stable operation. So, you know, so far in my case, I've had to do very little to uh, combat that. It seems it's not really a big problem at all that I've noticed for me. I know some other machines can get really chattery. I usually, when I set my V3i up, I put it up in the air in pinpoint mode, go to the frequency offset, find the quietest channel, and I'm good to go. I run my sensitivity as high as I can without getting any chatter. And uh, which so far in uh, all the places I've hunted is, is very high. I know one thing that people have thought about the V3i is that it's such a complex machine that they've kind of shied away from it. But really there's so many programs on here, factory programs, that it really is a turn on and go machine. You don't have to do a ton of research or a, a ton of reading and tweaking to get out there and find the good stuff. Some of the factory programs are hotter than others. You've got a high pro, a deep silver, and a stereo mix mode program on here, which are really deep programs right out of the box. Then you have your standards like coin and jewelry and coin program. They're good, you know, down to six inches so far in my testing with the stock settings. I mean, it only takes just a teeny bit of adjustment to pump it up even further. That's another, you know, really cool feature about this detector I like. You've got the live control bar at the bottom of the screen, and you can adjust your sensitivity on the fly, your ground tracking. Uh, you can customize the colors of the display. There's so many things you can do, but you really don't have to do a lot to get out there and find deep coins. In my test bed footage, which is going to come up at the end of this little talking session, You'll see the stock high pro program and uh, you know what it can do, and uh, it really impressed me. Um, I've got a 10 inch quarter buried, and that, I mean that's a really deep. And there's a lot of people who claim they can get 10 inch coins all the time, but I've owned a lot of metal detectors. I've reviewed and tested a bunch, and 10 inch a 10 inch coin is is very impressive. Um, I've got that on there, but probably the most amazing feature to me is you're able to see what each frequency is doing. You know this is a three frequency machine. You've got the 2.5 hertz, kilohertz, 7.5 and 22.5 and when you pinpoint a target it gives you a reading of each frequency strength and this to me is a major major cool thing about this is say you've got a quarter signal and I know everybody's probably been out there and got a clean quarter signal and dug down and it's a bottle cap. Well, when you pinpoint with the V3i, if it's a quarter, you're going to see 
the uh, 2.5 kilohertz frequency is going to be dominant on that target. If it was a bottle cap, the 7.5 kilohertz frequency uh, would be dominant, and you could pass that up. I mean, you know, the less trash you dig means the more good targets you're going to be able to acquire, and to me that really gives this machine an edge over many, many, many other machines I've used. And it also goes, you know, for the the normal trash range where you're looking you're looking for that gold ring and you know it can be in the nickel zone or the pull tab region uh, you know small women's rings can be in the foil region when you're getting these signals you know which you know a lot of parks that I hunt have thousands of signals in this trash range and if you dug it all you probably get a <laughs> a lot of rings but it might take you you know three years to clean this park out you kind of get a, an advantage here that when you get one of these signals in the nickel range and you pinpoint, if you see the 22.5 kilohertz frequency is dominant, that's a really good indication that that's a target you, you should recover. You know, small pieces, other small pieces of junk may read at the 7.5 is dominant, and you, you're going to know that that's not a good low conductor that you're looking for. I mean, it's not 100% foolproof. I've still dug trash, but you think if you've got 100 targets and you can cut out, say, 25%, you know, it's just a guess, that just increases your likelihood that much more of recovering a good target. This summer, uh, that's something that's really got me excited. I'm going to get back to some schools I've hunted that are just loaded with trash, and I'm going to put this machine through its paces, and I'm going to focus in a lot on those targets and I'm still going to be looking for the the deep silver at some of these places I know there could be a few left that I've hunted really hard seeing this machine hit on that 10 inch coin with that good of a tone is you know got me excited to take it out there and it, that's the really cool thing about the three frequency and you got a couple different modes you can run with the three frequency as well I can't explain everything in my little video. This is just his first impressions, but you know, White's Electronics has you know a lot of really good videos that'll that'll teach you almost every aspect of the V3i as far as that goes. <clears throat> but I'm just going over the, you know the strong points that I've seen. And another thing I like is that you can run in any of those frequencies by themselves of your choice, and instead of kind of splitting the power between the three frequencies you can transmit that one 2.5 kilohertz frequency really hard and really deep and uh, that's kind of already being done on the machine with the deep silver program you've got a 2.5 kilohertz program that's you know optimized to find those old silver coins and uh, you know it's a deep a deep seeking program that is set at the factory where you could you know pump it up a little bit more and adjust it for your conditions and you also have, you know, the ability to do the opposite. This machine has a prospecting program. You're running in the 22.5 kilohertz uh, frequencies to do gold prospecting. You know, you could also adapt that frequency to look for, uh, you know, jewelry at the park, or uh, and you know, to really hit hard on that. But when you pinpoint, and of course, the single frequencies, you only get an indication of that frequency on the screen. So that's you know one little thing you lose with single. The, the three frequency you really do get a lot of information on, you know what frequency is really doing what. But you know if you're searching the riverbeds with a small coil, you run that 22.5 kilohertz frequency. You know that's going to be way hotter on you know gold nuggets than I'd say it would be on little pieces of iron. You know, so that's really going to help you out. And this machine also has a whole array of ground filters, so you can find the best filter for your ground conditions and achieve, you know, the maximum depth you can get out of the machine, which uh, is really cool. You know, it goes beyond the standard just ground balance, you know, that a lot of machines have, and which this machine, you know, you ground balance manually as well, and it has auto tracking where you can track the terrain or you can just lock the ground balance if you feel like your terrain is maintaining you know the same kind of uh, mineralization everywhere and uh, one less thing to mess with and you know maybe eke out a little bit more performance somehow with a positive offset and your ground balance locked so 
with all this things can do, I'm very excited. <clears throat> I am very impressed with it. It's not confusing at all. I've been hunting since I've started mainly in the preset programs just to try them out and I'm very happy with those, especially the, the little bit hotter programs on there. Um, I feel like anybody could go out to the park in the coin and jewelry program and recover plenty of coins and as you grow in your experience and knowledge you can adapt those programs for your particular uh, ground conditions and your particular hunting environments. I mean you you can recover you can adjust recovery speed I mean there's just there's so many things you can do but the way it's set up you really don't have to be intimidated and feel like you need to have all that knowledge right away to use the machine because those factory programs are really useful decent programs um, overall I'd say my first impressions are extremely positive and uh, I can't wait to get out and uh, really put this thing through its paces and see what I can learn about the machine and maybe unlock some more secrets but uh, you know stay tuned guys and uh, watch my footage I got test bed uh, footage and then a couple little random clips I'm gonna toss in there when I was out in the field just messing around it's very interesting stuff and I want you guys to see that you know those deep coins hitting on this machine thank you for watching I appreciate it hey guys I'm doing a new test bed I'm gonna check with any detector that I review and I got one row here six inches I'm gonna do uh, here are just some clad coins, uh, penny, dime, nickel, quarter at six. I'm gonna move back a spot. I'm gonna do eight. I'll show you a hole with a ruler and a coin in eight, and then uh, I'll probably do one just 10 inch quarter. Um, that'll be my uh, deepest coin, and see what'll hit that. We're out here in the test bed. I got the V3i in the stock high pro program. I've got uh, three six inch coins, three eight inch coins, and a 10 inch coin. Let's see how it does on the uh, six inch quarter. Six inch dime. Six inch nickel. Eight inch dime. 8 inch quarter, 8 inch nickel, 10 inch quarter. So that's in the stock program. I'm getting a little bit of electromagnetic interference and one thing I really like about the V3i is there's so many ways to uh, address that. Uh, you can go over here to your frequency offset, hit pinpoint and just go through them until you see one that's not really moving. See, there's a little bit there. We can go down one, get a ground balance. And there's that 10 inch quarter. That's with the uh, stock high pro program. The uh, stock coin and jewelry program is, uh, it's good on the six inch coins. Uh, really easy. The 8 inch coins are a little bit more challenging because the uh, RX gain and the sensitivity settings are pretty low and it's running a much higher filter. But um, just a few minor adjustments and you can get uh, quite a bit deeper. But um, 10 inch quarter, I mean, it was hitting it with a stock program. Um, I've got a High Pro 2 I've modified the original high pro just cranked it up just a little bit well here's the deep silver let's ground balance that one here's the eight inch coins dime quarter nickel 
and there's the 10 inch quarter there's a lot of little iron fragments in here and this is uh kind of why I set my test bed up. I didn't want it to be super clean. I want to see what it's like in a real hunting environment with uh, small bits of iron and, and see what you can get if you can reach those deep coins uh, in that mode. Now I'm going to find my uh, High Pro 2 program. Do a little ground balance. It's a six inch. There's the eight inch nickel, eight inch dime, eight inch quarter, and 10 inch quarter. So, uh, pretty good. Really, uh, fantastic depth. And I mean, all I really did to that program was just, uh, crank up the RX gain a couple of points, made sure I had, uh, still stable operation and um, not a whole lot of tweaking there just kind of customizing it for my ground conditions uh, running the, the the five bandpass filter there's a little bit of EMI here since I'm in a, a neighborhood backyard so uh, depth wise can't complain not one bit and it really doesn't take a lot of tweaking to get uh, excellent depth one of the other features that I think is really awesome on the V3i is being able to see each frequency in the pinpoint mode and see which frequency is hitting the hardest. Here's the uh, six inch quarter. We're going to pinpoint that. You see that the green, that's the 2.5 kilohertz frequency. That's pretty much telling me right there that that's a quarter and not like a steel bottle cap. Let's do that again on the eight inch quarter. Working awesome so uh, that's a major major help and then when you get to the lower conductors you see that the blue is dominant the 22 kilohertz and that's a really deep nickel but uh, you know that's gonna help you pick through the trash and find a lot more rings and actual nickels and uh, a lot less uh, can slaw and other things like that. I mean, it's not foolproof, but it definitely reduces the amount of trash you're going to dig. And this deep, deep quarter. I may need to turn the all metal sensitivity up a little bit, but 10 inches deep. I mean, that's hard to beat. <clears throat> that's incredible, really, to me. I've dug a lot of coins up metal, with all kinds of metal detectors and being able to hit a 10 inch coin consistently. The VDI reading was a little bit high, but that tone was uh, so sweet. I would definitely uh, go after that coin. Hey guys, I'm out here in the woods. I'm going to do uh, kind of a little field test uh, with a V3i using mostly the stock programs. Um, We've got a site. I've been kind of scouting around a little bit. And my buddy Cody's out here. What's up? We're going to hit this. There's a pile of rocks right here. We've already found like a fairly old looking sole of a shoe. I mean, it's got nails all through it. Um, some old glass. We've got an old uh, mason jar lid and a piece of uh, some kind of strange large piece of iron. We have to identify what this is. But um, I mean, this is, we're literally on top of this mountain. Had to put my truck in four wheel drive and drive up like an old tractor trail to get here. And uh, apparently this was a habitated area, but there's just little to no signs at all of any kind of a shelter except for some rocks piled up and a little bit of debris. There's no road really in here. We had to hike in down the side of this mountain right here. But uh, I'll give you a look at the V3i and uh, stock programs and uh, let you know how we do. Hey, uh, swinging the V3i. I mean, this place is loaded with garbage, but I found something interesting. 
It looks like it has a little gold uh, color in the middle. Might take it over here to uh, one of these little springs and wash it off and show it to you. Here's that little thing dipped in the spring. I think it may be some kind of part of a hair clip or some kind of little ornamental piece. Looks to be copper with a little gold plate. Interesting. Hey guys, I'm out here with the uh, V3i doing my initial testing. Um, I'm running in high pro. I've got the RX gain. Jumped up just a little bit uh, for uh, still running very extremely stable. And I uh, just got a really deep signal. It's going to be hard to see here, but I'm up this far on the left. I left my tape in the car, so that's at least 10 inch depth. Very sandy soil. Looks like got a little coin pile here. There's a dime on one side, a dime on the other side, a nickel in the middle. Wow. Very deep. Awesome find there. Quite a bit of metal, but uh, it's exceptional depth. I think I might need to turn my. Uh, AC sensitivity up a little bit. It was weak on the pinpoint. It was so deep. But these aren't very old. Just a really sandy spot right here. Uh, there's a river nearby and there's also a lot of deep uh, beer cans and stuff here. Seems like everything sinks, but um, I'm at an old school site. Hoping to get some old stuff, but it's an interesting uh, deep three coin spill. Show if I get anything else.